brought to you by RunToGold.com, the premier source for monetary science applied to geopolitical, international, and economic financial news and events. Welcome back to the 21st episode of the RunToGold.com podcast. Today I have a special guest, John Noreen, CPA for a big accounting firm, and he's going to be discussing tips. So John, what exactly are tips? Well, tips are a government security stands for treasury inflated sorry treasury inflation protected <laughs> securities <laughs> sorry <laughs> and what they do is they protect you in theory from inflation and how this works is you give the government your principal and they will adjust it every year for inflation to the rate that they tell you so for example if the government says there's 3% interest rate you get a 3% increase in principal after a year and thus, it protects you from inflation to the extent there is any in the economy. So it sounds like a really nice and good investment because even though you know the government's inflating away your purchasing power, it protects you by adjusting every year for it. And you get a little interest to boot. Right now, a lot of these give like an extra 1% of interest on top of that. So they're like a treasury bill, but the principal is protected. Right. So Supposedly. Yes. So after a year, 10 years, supposedly you're in the exact same spot as when you started. So what's, what's so sneaky about these? <clears throat> well, the thing is, is once you cash out of these things, the part they don't tell you is they're going to be taxed. Not just the interest, but also the increase in principal. Now, you might not really think about that because, say, after like two or three years, you've made nine, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. That feels good. You've, you've got more money. You've got more dollars. You've got more dollars. But what happens is the government will come in and tax you at whatever your effective tax rate is. And say it's 25%, as I said in my article, and that ends up taking a quarter of your increase away. Depending on the level of inflation, it can be around 1%, 2% of your purchasing power that gets lost through this taxation. And it feels kind of invisible because you throw it on your tax return and whatever. You have more money. But no, if you stop and look at it, you're slowly eroding your capital in this investment. So they're really not that protected, are they? Well, I mean, <laughs> I guess they're kind of protected. If you had just held on to the dollars, you'd have lost more. But they do not accurately protect you from the thing that they say they're protecting you from. Oh, so like a typical government security, it's uh, fraudulent and misadvertisement. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> I, I suppose it's not total. I mean, they do what they say. It does somewhat kind of inflate you, uh, sorry, protect you from inflation, but not totally. But it's only the inflation rate that they state. Well, right. So, so if there's a disagreement between what the government says is inflation and what, say, John Williams says is inflation, or if they change the inflation methodology and your purchasing power is still eroded at that faster rate, they make no compensation for that. Well, right. I suppose that's part of, part of the contract when you sign up for tips is you agree to their stated inflation rate, right or wrong. So that's part of the problem. And they can unilaterally change it. Right. And so, for example, in a year like this where we know we're having bunches of inflation, but because real estate is crashing like crazy, your basket of goods for your CPI um, indicators is actually showing a bit of deflation. So you're losing purchasing power, and they're going to tell you there's no inflation just because real estate prices are going down. So, so let me get this straight. You enter into a contract with this uh, government agency. They have the power to unilaterally modify the terms, and then if there's a dispute, they get to decide who the winner is in the dispute through their, through their quote, independent judges who are still state actors. Uh, I suppose. <laughs> they don't necessarily change the terms of the contract. They just might not be absolutely honest in their methodology for applying inflation. But you never really, I guess, they tell you they're going to tell you inflation and just don't specify exactly how they're going to do it, which is a risk you take upon purchasing the tips. So when you're dealing with a – when you pick up a rattlesnake, you know what it is when yeah. you pick it up. Yeah. And if it bites you, you can't complain that much. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> if you get bit, it's what you expected. Now, now this is not just limited to tips, is it? <clears throat> well, the reason I like tips is because it's specifically an investment focusing on inflation. And in this instance, you can see where you have – an increase in dollars of your value, 
and yet you get taxed for it, even though you know the economic um, balance of your investment is supposed to be the same. You're exactly in the same position, and yet you get taxed. So let's start projecting this to all the other stuff you could possibly invest in. Real estate's a great example, because supposedly it goes up roughly 3 to 4% every year. And if inflation is 3 to 4% every year, that means you've really never had any gain on your real estate. And yet once you sell it, you're going to get taxed on it. So, so it's like a moving sidewalk. You think you're going forward, right. but you don't know. Yeah, you don't know. You might be going forward, you might be in the same spot, or you could slowly be moving backwards. I, I, I like that analogy. Even though you're walking forward. Right. So, I mean, also other things. Stocks. These are also inflated. Bonds. Um, t- gold. Any, any commodity can be inflated this way that you'll end up getting taxed on, even though your gain is an illusion created by the government. Now, if they didn't tax it, you know, whatever. Sure, that's worth more dollars, I sell it. You're still kind of in the same position. But you're but taking that trust in their inflation rate <clears throat> still. Well, I mean, in all other things. Take, for example, the housing. If it goes up 3%, you sell it for 3%. If you didn't get taxed, you haven't been robbed. You're still, you still sold a ho- bought a house and sold a house. It's where the inflation tax hits you is when they actually tax you on an inflated gain that isn't real. And so that's how they sneak it in because everyone's like, oh, yay, I got more dollars. Yes and no. <laughs> but you have less gold or you have less beans or, or whatever. Or you have less house. Or, yeah, you have less house. You, <laughs> buy, you sell your house and you can no longer even purchase a new house at the same economic value. So that's what's really scary about tips is they're a perfect, in my mind, they're a perfect demonstration of how the gov- government robs us through inflation. And it's when they get you on the butt end of selling stuff through taxes. <laughs> well, they, they sure like to get people there. And it's always, uh, they're very good at their robbing and lying and stealing. And they, they do it very sneakily in many cases. Well, thank you very much for the interview. And hopefully we'll have you on again. This thank is, you. Yeah, this has been the 21st uh, episode of the RunToGold.com podcast. You've been listening to the RunToGold.com podcast, the premier source for applied monetary science on the web.